Railways is looking to manufacture Vande Bharat aluminium train sets for the very first time. There's going to be a quantum change from the existing Vande Bharat because it's also 200 kilometers per hour. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of TUI Business Bites. Indian Railways is looking to manufacture Vande Bharat aluminium train sets for the very first time. Two majors, one is Francis Alstom and the other is Swiss major Stadler along with Mela have submitted the technical bids for this rupees 30000 crore project. To understand better the importance of this for Indian Railways, we have with us Sudhan Chumani. He is the former GM of Integral Coach Factory in Chennai and also widely known as the man behind Vande Bharat trains. Hi sir, first up, why does Indian Railways need aluminium trains? So aluminium is gradually becoming the norm. for manufacturing coach shells right. it started mainly for high speed trains because aluminium is lighter and the density is lower than uh, uh, steel or iron that's why it, it is uh, uh, more energy efficient because at higher speeds you need the uh, weight of the payload to be tear uh, weight of the train to be lower uh, so it can be move faster at lower energy consumption because it needs uh, special techniques you know th- there are longer extrusions which have to be made it's not as if aluminium is much more expensive than steel right but the process of making those extrusions needs uh, investment in machinery and plant and tooling and that's why uh, making aluminium shells is more expensive and that is now coming down with more and more penetration so in respect of our semi high speed trains also aluminium shells would give uh, good advantage in terms of uh, lighter weight and therefore more energy efficiency and aluminium by and large is also aesthetically superior so the train from that point of view standpoint it's durable also uh, is a preferred material so slowly that's why just like the world over Uh, and europe has become a norm for all medium high speed trains uh, this should be done in india also and now you're talking about the cost so what will in your opinion over a long period of time be the average cost of manufacturing an aluminium train set vis-a-vis the stainless steel ones we have right now yeah so first when we floated train 20 at that stage we were going for if i remember correctly around uh 15 or 20 rakes so that was okay. not a large number for somebody to invest in uh, the machinery and plant and tooling required to make those aluminum extrusions the present tender which you had just talked about is for 100 trains so the economies are s- of scale are much better and after bringing some initially the lot of extrusions and maybe the even aluminum sheets from abroad uh it uh, investment will be made in india to manufacture these extrusions to bring down the price it should be to my mind at this that considering 100 trains may be about 10% more expensive compared to stainless steel equivalent right uh, but over the years as the extrusions get made in india the price is likely to come down okay okay and you are saying that uh, from a durability perspective there as it is better off from a long term shelf life by and large the experiences that they are the aluminum is unlike the popular opinion is more durable okay okay and what's in it for passengers you know what are the kind of features that passengers can look forward to and do you think that uh, with the manufacture of aluminum trains you know will the fares be higher for riding such trains okay so in a long term perspective the objective should be to switch over to aluminum in a very long term perspective right and if it is done gradually as i said as the uh, sections and extrusions are made in india the price differential would be brought down uh, so per se passengers uh, to be charged more for an aluminum train of uh, a similar vande bharat uh, experience may not be very uh, i don't think may work that much but that's a matter of policy for the railway board to decide um uh, for the passengers i told you about the aesthetics and uh, basically energy consumption is not something which directly affects the passengers it it also means that it will accelerate faster and the prospect of cutting down travel time 
would be even better than stainless steel uh, one day bharat so okay. that is uh, something that passengers can uh, look forward to so it will translate into faster trains just by virtue of faster acceleration deceleration to some extent i mean it's not something that would be uh, that much dependent on aluminium just like uh, as energy efficiency is but uh, definitely the look of the train would be better and uh, yeah, as for furnishings go whether it's stainless steel or aluminium the train can be furnished with all the uh, amenities for the passengers uh, uh, either way it can be furnished yeah. but what about the business opportunity for both the domestic and the foreign original equipment manufacturers so there are two things one is aluminium per se so the aluminium as i already told you is uh, these uh, special investment in plant and machinery and tooling to manufacture those aluminium you need the aluminium raw material Al- india is a big manufacturer of aluminium by the way but the special alloy that's required for this train is not made in india right now so these are the opportunities for the aluminium industry in india and it's not just about 100 trains yeah they would be looking at more and more trains to be built in future so it's an opportunity for the aluminium industry as well as some other industries which may invest in uh, taking the raw material from these aluminium uh, majors and manufacturing the extrusions in their factory so these are the opportunities per se otherwise these 100 trains that we talked about uh is a uh, is going to be a quantum change from the existing vande bharat because it's also 200 kilometers per hour instead yeah. of 160 now you may well ask as to where you would run these 200 kilometers when you are not even able to run 160 kilometers per hour train right i can only say yes we are lagging behind in infrastructure we must concentrate on that but it will be like a demonstrative uh, project and making us future ready uh it not be so effective to run these 200 kilometers per hour trains on at 130 140 kilometers per hour but it's a beginning and we hope that infrastructure does catch up uh, to uh, supporting this kind of uh, faster train so the tender for which the technical bids have been submitted says that this is for sleeper version so you expect that these trains are likely to be run on long distance routes right exactly so there you know there has been a need of a sleeper version for a long time it's it's been a long time coming and it's quite surprising that it's not there yet right. by this time icf should have definitely made one themselves and there was a plan so, to do so because very soon when you have so many vande bharat trains uh, you will not have enough day trains where uh, these trains can be saleable or a good right. proposition so so basically overnight trains to begin with with rajdhani and uh, that's why uh, these uh, trains i would expect would be uh, rajdhanis would be the first candidates for replacement by the trains when as and when they start uh, coming in and at 200 kmph actually if you are able to move passengers faster you are trying to win back share which you may have lost from both roadways and airways you know aviation exactly but uh, wishes are not horses I mean, you can make the train, but uh, the infrastructure is not there. Yes, so unless support. you also, yeah, unless you uh, invest in infrastructure, and then you are actually able to run these trains at 200, it will change the very face of passenger travel here. The okay. transformation would be phenomenal, but merely getting the trains uh, will not really help. You'll have to invest in infrastructure first to make it 160. and then uh, aim to take it higher you can't really take it much about 200 right. for that you need a ded- dedicated track but right. around 200 km per hour is there is a possibility and, and that investment should also start as in when we scale up the production of aluminium trains eventually in india what is the export potential of these trains out of india is there a market that you see there you see we always uh, start talking of exports premature as it happened in case of train 80 of devara also right. export will happen to middle level countries the poorer countries they work against indian line of credit or some loan or here and there and they don't right. have electrification so these kind of trains cannot be exported to traditional uh, clients that we have right whereas the developed world is not going to take trains from india they have not they don't even take from china easily or even you know japan doesn't take from europe europe doesn't take from japan 
Right. So they're middle level countries which don't have the capability to manufacture these trains whereas India has to do it should be the target. Their okay. first question would be what's your own experience in your country with these trains. Right. So we have to build up enough experience in the country, learn from that, improve the train and then uh, strongly approach these countries for exporting it to them. Uh, See, it's, the gauge is also different. Uh, nobody, none of these countries really have a plot gauge. So mm. it's either meter gauge or standard gauge. So that's also will take some convincing mm. that we have the capability to design in these gauges, although we don't run, uh, we don't have these gauges on Indian railways. It will, we need some doing. But first, mm. a large number should be run in India, manufactured, designed, manufactured in India, and then we will become ready for export.